delight to very specially and warmly welcome you to this grand and regal event, the King's Banquet, organized by Elevate Africa and of course graciously hosted by the 21st Olu of Wari, his royal III. Please give them a resounding round of applause. Thank you. My name is Mojibade Shosoya. Uh, yes. My name is Bob. Ladies and gentlemen, it promises to be a very interesting evening. I'm sure most of us have been a part of the sessions that have yet discussed ideas that have been propounded and suggestions for the future. Let us start this event by committing it into the hands of God all these last two days thinking about how to improve the lot you have given to us now it's time for us to unwind in your presence because we pray now, ladies and gentlemen Jesus. according to this evening's program we're going to take several goodwill messages who better to set the ball rolling as we take goodwill messages than the omukama of toro kingdom or your Ngiba Kabama Iguru Rukidi the fourth from Uganda. Can we please make His Royal Majesty welcome today as we take his goodwill? Message. Thank you for coming all the way from the Pearl of Africa to visit us here in the giant. His Royal Majesty, the King Ngiame Atwatse the third. Her Royal Majesty Queen Olori Atwatse the third hosts and founders of Elevate Africa and conveners of this first Often global times, convening. It is very hard to see our potential Africa. as we are going through growing pains. Pains my which are the leader here in Africa and having been in this position for the past 29 years, my discernment has been heightened to realize that we Africans have lost touch of our relevance. The Eurocentric the education entrusted upon our individual nations has in many ways nullified our genius capabilities. The eradication of our historical relevance has also given away to the leading of Western cultures, infiltrating our landscape and orchestrating a change in the ideologies and perspectives which once brought Europe here His to land has us. divided us through the impregnation, impregnation of boundary lines and a plethora of colonial masters across a potpourri of languages and cultures foreign to our own, though we have way too we many have languages since emerged to be a divided continent. Africa, with each country serving the needs of the colonial pipers, who played the tune for our dancing. Many of our nations have exchanged the albatross of satellite management by the colonial masters for heavy burdens of debt that are seemingly impossible. Our spiritual to revival is needed in order to kindle their inner potential and removed from the veil that promotes alternative ideologies and concepts foreign to our to African culture and norms. I thank you all. May God bless you. Um, allow me to recognize his presence. King Leyadbo Rekuzi Benjamin Ikenechuku, the Dean of Agbo Kingdom in Delta State, is in the building. You welcome, Your Majesty. You know what's beautiful? Our Royal Majesty from Uganda was crowned at the age of three. Am I right, sir? In 1995. The internet describes you as the one with that record, as the youngest king ever crowned. But don't be offended. I make bold to correct the internet, not you. The youngest king ever crowned is the one sitting in front of you. The Dane of Agbo, he was crowned at the age of two in 1979. You know, he wasn't even aware. 
Right. Anytime Bobby starts a segment by saying don't be offended, just know what's about to come. No. Mm -hmm. Bobby. Um, your Majesty, did I lie? <laughs> Were you not crowned by two? And they have. So I know you're not aware, but. Two years and four months. Two years. And four months. Two years and four months. There's <laughs> an extra four months above the two yes. years. Yes. You know, at the age of two, he was just doing ba 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 ba. At four months, he's doing ba ba boo ba ba boo. <laughs> There's a difference. So, yes. These two gentlemen became kings at a very young age. Even our Olu of Wari was pretty much a very young man when he became king. The difference between him and the other two is that he was aware. <laughs> our Ugandan king wasn't aware. The day of Agbo wasn't aware. Mm -hmm. You know, I did, uh, your, your Majesty's day of Agbo, I know your story because you were crowned the year I was born. So you can imagine for a young child like me, at the age of three, in like 1982, my mom would always scream at me and say, it's your mate that is king <laughs> in Agbo. But it stopped one day when I told her, it's your mate that gives birth to the king. <laughs> to motivate the Africans and to tell them that there is hope for Africa, as well as for the Africans and the children of Africa. And this poem is titled, Yes, You Can. Have you ever felt like there is something that you cannot do? Where you start a conversation with something like, I can't do it. I'm too young to see beyond. And if you do not grab the reins today and make the change, then indeed... We talked about him already. Wasted. His Royal Majesty, King Kiago Rekuzi Benjamin Ikenechuku, the Dane of Agbo Kingdom. He tells us no messages. Your Royal Majesty, thank you for being a part. My dear brother, the Olu of Warriors, I like to say the king of the waters. My dear brother, King Toro, I think I had a very beautiful phrase for you. Is it the mountains of the moon? Somewhere that I would love to see one of these days. All of you that are here tonight, elevate Africa is what we're talking about. As I look upon all of you, I see the elevation. I see the promise. I see the hope. We need to come together as a continent, as a people. I don't think I see many venues that you would see so much beauty, so much culture. And your majesty, I'd like to thank you for bringing all of this together. As we continue to move into the future, we continue to have opportunities because honestly, I believe that opportunities are constantly there. They don't come once in a lifetime. Opportunities must be grabbed. Your Majesty, King of Turin, you have presented us with an opportunity. An opportunity to reach across borders. An opportunity to make new friends. I have certainly made a new friend today, yes, and I will cherish you immensely. So once again, I'd like to thank all of you for being here today. As you leave here today, please continue to keep the contacts that you've made. And my wonderful comedian and most beautiful lady here, thank you very, very much for the good work you're doing. May God bless us all. Thank you very, very much. Thank, thank you, you very Majesty. much, Your Royal Majesty, the Dane of Africa. Thank you very much for being a part of the King's Banquet tonight. Now, Chief of Defense Staff, General Gwabi Musa. A round of applause, please. It is my honor to give my goodwill message today at the inaugural Elevate African Global Convening King's Banquet, where we celebrate the strides made by Africans. As the Chief of Defense Staff, Armed Forces of Nigeria, I'm proud to stand before you and acknowledge the significant progress that our continent has made in recent years. From economic growth to technological advancements, Africans have been at the forefront of driving positive change and innovation. Our commitment to sustainable development is evident in the various initiatives and programs that have been implemented to address key challenges such as poverty, inequality, and environmental degradation. As Africans, nobody should speak for us. Nobody can speak for us. We must speak for ourselves wherever we are. 
and we must stand strong and bold. We refuse to be intimidated by anyone because we are Africans, the cradle of civilization. To bring up on stage for another goodwill message, I'm talking about none other than distinguished Senator Ned Woko. A round of applause for him, please. Thank you very much for your presence. I greet everybody. Let me start by thanking the Uru of Uri for this initiative. This is something that is very close to my heart, Africa. Africa is, I'm sure you know how they partitioned Africa alongside economic interests. And we have remained so, regardless of the fact that Africa has so much to offer itself. Who are the barriers in Africa? All the borders must be free for movement of Africans across Africa. We don't need to import anything. All we need is the third item, which is inter-trade between countries in Africa. African currency that will enable us to trade, up, trade amongst ourselves. So I had time to speak with people outside and I was surprised to see so many people from, Af from America, from Ghana and other countries. So we need more of this kind of engaging events. To continue with the goodwill messages this evening, please let's welcome former First Lady, Federal Republic of Nigeria, Dame Patience also Jonathan. Recognize our father, His Royal Majesty, the Olaf Warrior, and our mother, the our beautiful mother, Her Royal Majesty Atwashu the third, and His Royal Majesty, the King of Abo, King Benjamin, thank you for coming. I always admire you whenever I see you with His Majesty, the Lord for you. Anywhere he is, you are always with him. Thank you for coming. Thank you. And His Royal Majesty, the king of Uganda. One day we will also be in Kampala to grace your own location too. Thank you for coming. Permit me to recognize my beautiful constituency, the women constituency. <laughs> Thank you. It is my pleasure to be in the midst of the war leaders are renowned men and women of Africa and other continents. Africa is blessed with professionals and talented people who has great potentials. These potentials, therefore, need to be harnessed. Thank you, patience, Jonathan. I think the applause indeed represents how everyone is feeling. We're truly excited that you're here. Bringing up Her Royal Majesty, Olori Atsuwashi III, the beautiful, the excellent, the phenomenal Olori Atsuwashi III. Please give her a resounding, lusty, looking as elegant as always. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. What a wonderful two days it has been, right? Yeah, yeah, we could give it up for Africa. The conversation has been rich. The solutions have been potent and practical. It's been wonderful. Thank you all so much for joining us. In I must make mention of my favorite. I'm so sorry. Sorry if I'm biased, sirs. His Majesty, Ogyame Atu Ashe III, CFR, the Ulu of Wari. My king, my absolute best friend, thank you so much um, for everything that you do for the kingdom, but also for the country and for the continent. Thank you for who you are, who, what you represent. Um, we absolutely are honored 
and are blessed to be your people. God bless you, sir. Um, now, Threads of Africa, I must say, is a fashion prize that we thought about as a way of elevating Africa and elevating the, the talk of African fashion. As most of you know, I love fashion. <laughs> uh, my love for fashion runs deep. Um, but it's not just about the clothes, or it's not just about the fabric or even the trends. I think fashion for me is about my identity, which is why I always wear Nigerian. Shout out to Tubo and Banke, who I consistently rep. Um, it's about our identity, it's about our heritage, and it's about our stories. So when I envisioned the Threads of Africa Prize, I didn't just see a, an opportunity to do a competition. I actually wanted to create a platform, a movement for us to begin to reclaim the narrative um, about our fashion. And as African fashion has always been our language, they say French or Italian women are the most fashionable. But I dare say, look, look at Annie Shekiri woman, okay? Thank you. All you need to do is go to an Owen Bear in Lagos and see how fashionable our women are. Or anywhere in Ghana, you know, African women are one of the most fashionable women in the world. Can we please give ourselves a round of applause? 20 entries. These are our top two picks. They deserve another round of applause. Congratulations to both of you. We are incredibly proud of the story that you are telling about Africa. Please keep it up and we wish you all the very best. And we suspend everything we're doing and put our hands together in resounding fashion for our host, His Royal Majesty, Ogyame Atuwashe III, CFR, the 21st Olu of Wari. A round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. As he comes on stage. By, I guess, establishing my own protocol. Ladies first. My darling wife. Gloria to Ashley III. The brains and the beauty of everything you see here today. And uh, I am a grassroots person, so I'm going to acknowledge my grassroots leaders, the chairmen of Worry North and Worry South local government. Thank you for supporting us here tonight. Thank God for this successful inauguration of Elevate Africa, and specifically subtitled The Africa We See. Images control and determine perception. And I want to start on a military note, and I'm very glad that our Chief of Defense Staff is here. I know a couple of days ago, there was a Nigerian officer that was honored in the UK. that he was the most distinguished officer from officers coming from all over the globe. A Nigerian officer was singled out for distinction. And I said to myself, this is clearly what we want to see coming out, not just from Nigeria, but from Africa. Beautifully coordinated military matches I have ever seen. And they mixed it, not just with the typical military fashion, but there was a bit of some cultural appropriation into it. It was truly beautiful. One of those moments where I have been proud to be a Nigerian. And this was now our military making us proud. As Africans, we all have a collective role to play in elevating the image and the perception of this continent. Um, I have spoken about it a few times, and others have spoken about it several times, about the shape of this continent, which is like that of a gun. And a gun has different parts. And like the human body, we all have different parts. And God has designed it so. We are all to identify our parts and stick to it. The trigger cannot be competing with the barrel, with the handle. The brain cannot be contending to do what the heart does, what the legs does. Everybody should identify that this is the role that we are going to play collectively to make the whole be great. That when God was creating this continent, he put several rivers in this continent, but seven great rivers. 
seven great and mighty rivers, of which two of them are in this country, Nigeria. And every time I think about how these rivers beautifully intersect here in Nigeria, what comes to mind is that singular portion in the Bible. And even though it was written in reference to Ethiopia, I always feel it is applicable to Nigeria. And I am paraphrasing. Go you swift messengers to a nation tall and smooth of skin, a nation mighty and conquering, whose land the two rivers divide. God's word for Africa has already gone out, and it is for us to open our eyes and to see the first signs, interpret them correctly, so that our identity and purpose is well informed, and we are able to walk in that direction. But what are we going to do different this time? We will have to elevate and empower our women. God has given them tremendous birthing power. As African men, we need not only to tap into the creativity and birthing power of our women, but we should encourage it, support it, and elevate it. You give a woman a seed, an idea, a concept, whatever it is you give to her, she will incubate, nourish, and give it life. As I said earlier, all you have seen here since yesterday has come as a result of this man giving room, resources, and inspiration to this beautiful woman. The last couple of days is the end result. My darling, I bless you with the ability and capacity to be and do more. Continue to be fruitful and multiply. And I bless all of you in this gathering with the same. May there be a positive ripple effect across the continent. It's a story of my lineage and it is meant to inspire all of you and inspire the African mindset. At Washington the Third, we want to specially thank you for the platform of Elevate Africa. We want you to know that you are very special to Africa and you are very significant. On behalf of the team of the Elevate Africa team, it's my privilege to stand before you and express our deepest gratitude. This convening has been an extraordinary testament to the strength, the vision, the leadership that exists within our beloved continent. Thank you to all our distinguished speakers, panelists, moderators. We are incredibly grateful for your time, expertise, and thought-provoking discussions that you have led. You have helped lay the foundation for future change and collaboration across Africa.